What's up, guys? Uh, ben Pollock, Elite FTS, True Nutrition, blah, blah. Uh, I'm here again because there was an overwhelming amount of support for the Mountain of Crap program. Uh, people wanted to see a sample one. So I was honestly shocked by that. I did not expect that at all, but I'm psyched that you guys are into it. So I have put together a sample program. You can get it using the link below. It is totally free. You don't have to give me your email, any of that shit. Uh, the only thing I ask is that if you do share it, you credit me. So tag me on Instagram or uh, you know, mention me on the on the forums if you share it there, whatever. Uh, but I want to walk you guys through how I intend for it to work. Again, you may do with it whatever you like. Uh, this is just kind of my thought. So when you download it, it's a PowerPoint. I thought that was probably the easiest way to to make it for people since you're you're tracking things a little bit differently in this style of programming. You open the PowerPoint. You go to the first slide that actually has text on it, and those has that has your base sessions A one and B one. Remember, A1 is upper body, um, pressing for the shoulders and kind of chest and back focused because we have arm and delt days separately, and then B1 is legs. So on A1, I'm just going to walk you guys through all the movements, how I kind of intend to, to have them done. Uh, we start with a low to high cable fly uh, for a couple moderate sets. Don't push yourself too hard on these. These are our activation sets. All we're trying to do here is get some blood blood flow through the pecs so that when we move on to our major pressing movements, uh, we're, we're better better able to engage our pecs. We're better able to make use of that mind-muscle connection. We can get some better growth out of that. So you'll then move on to a reverse band incline bench. It doesn't have to be a reverse band. You can substitute any type of pressing movement for the chest that you like, actually. I do recommend... Uh, if you can, I, I would use some type of free weight. I, I do think there's some value to that. But if you have a machine that you love, go for it by all means. But you'll do a rest pause set. So remember, you're going to shoot for probably 8 to 10 reps on your first set. And you want to get 11 to 15 total before you move up and weight each time. And then I put in hammer shoulder press. I put in hammer shoulder press because that's one of the very few overhead presses that does not hurt my shoulders. Again, whatever you want to put in here is totally fine. Whether it's a, a standard overhead press, some other machine that you prefer, uh, I really don't care. Just an overhead press movement, not, a, not an isolation movement. And then just a reminder, stretch your pecs and delts afterwards. I do think there's a lot of merit in, in uh, stretching during your training. We then go on a straight arm push down. So this is a lap movement. Again, activation. We're just trying to get some blood flow through there. Uh, wide grip pull downs for rest pause set. And then for T-bar rows, I have two sets, five to eight reps, and then 10 to 12 reps as a back off. Uh, in the dog crap system, a lot of movements that are kind of heavy compound movements don't use rest pause methodology because that can be dangerous. Now with the T-bar row, I'm not so sure whether it is or not. Uh, but for me, I know that I can't really get good good use out of a, a rest pause set for T-bars, so that's why I put it this way. Again, that's up to you. It should be a horizontal rowing movement or horizontal back uh, pull, pull, a horizontal pull, excuse me. And a deadlift would be acceptable here, but I don't recommend it. Uh, in normal dog crap training, you would put your deadlift here on your back thickness slot, but I do not recommend that because... Remember, sometimes you'll have B1 and A1 back to back. And if you're deadlifting and then you have squats or even heavy leg press or hack squats the next day, you're going to be pretty in pretty rough shape. So I would try to keep your deadlifts, keep them as a hamstring variation. Uh, you know, a stiff legged deadlift, an RDL, something like that is what I would prefer for this methodology. So we'll move on to base session B1. Uh, we start off with seated calf raises. I always start with calves because I find at the end of leg day, I'm too tired to give them, you know, my, my full attention. Then go on to unilateral hamstring curls, one of my favorite activation movements for hamstrings. Uh, and then wide grip RDLs for the exact reason I mentioned. I like to put these in as a, as a uh, hamstring slot rather than a back thickness slot. And then stretch your hamstrings. Leg press for a rest pause set. And then one thing that Dante likes, uh, he's a big proponent of, is the leg widow maker, which is just a high rep, 20 plus rep set. Generally, you're supposed to choose your 10 rep max and get 20 no matter what it takes. That's kind of the hardcore, whatever. Just It should just be a ball busting set of 20 plus reps. Don't get too caught up in it. Just, just work really, really fucking hard. Stretch your quads and then adductor and abductor machine. The good girl, bad girl machine. Yes, I know they look ridiculous. You feel really silly on them. I don't care. Do them anyways because your ad, ad, adductors in particular don't get enough work with the compound movements, even if you pull sumo, and they are very important supportive muscle, supportive muscles. So if you're not working them, they're going to be underdeveloped. They could lead to injury down the road. 
Um, plus, if you're training for bodybuilding, training the ad adductors is going to really improve the, your look on a lot of front shots because it's really going to fill in that thigh gap for you so you don't look uh, kind of stringy on stage. So that's A1, B1. Uh, A2, B2, I'm going to let you guys go through those on your own. Uh, there's not really anything that I think is super interesting in there. Um, all the movements, if you're not familiar with them, you can Google it for yourself. Uh, a couple things to note. One was I have GHRs as my hamstring slot. Uh, this is not necessary. You could put in seated hamstring curls. I think that is a perfectly valid uh, movement. I personally really have a love affair with GHRs. They hit my hamstrings like no other movement I have found. But I again, I don't think they're a great movement to rest pause on, and I don't think they're a great movement to go low rep on. So what I have is five AMRAP sets. I don't encourage the use of this methodology very often um, but sometimes what I do for body weight movements in particular is to have five AMRAP sets and what you're going to do is over time you're going to set a time limit for your rest between sets I usually use a minute and you're just going to accumulate the total number of reps so let's say you do your five sets you get 10 9 8 8 and 4 reps because by the end you're fried so you'd add all those up whatever that comes out to I think it's 10 20 30, 39, I think. And you'll just try and move that up over time. And once you get to a certain number, I usually use 50. Once you do five sets of 10 with one minute rest, then you can add some weight or you can remove some band tension if you're using band assisted GR, whatever the, whatever the hell you want to do. That's a methodology. It's not really coming from Dante or from John, um, but it's something that I like and, and that I encourage you guys to give a shot at. Uh, so then we'll go into the pump sessions, all right? So these are for your arms and for your delts. And I also threw abs in with delts because I didn't have abs in on any other day. And I really think you can train abs whenever you want, as often as you want. Um, but I like to put them with delts because I think that um, delts tend for me to be the, the easiest day, even though my delts suck. It's like I can use so little weight on those. Uh, and it's just one muscle group, unlike buys and tries, there's at least two muscle groups uh, that I just don't feel like I get enough work on shoulder day alone. So starting off with arms, we're going to have single arm cable pushdowns, uh, just a few straight sets. Again, think of this as type, sort of an activation thing. John really recommends training your triceps before your biceps warm up the elbow joint. So that's your goal here. Weighted tricep dip. The tricep dip just means stay upright. Don't lean over and use your chest. Five AMRAP sets exactly like the GHRs. A superset three rounds, very straightforward. Barbell curl skull crusher. Alternating hammer curl, two sets of 20. Here, what I want you to do is to choose a weight where you can get 10 strict reps per arm, get 10 strict, don't put the weights down, keep going. You're gonna use a little bit of body English to get your next 10, right? That should be pretty freaking brutal. And then a BFR bicep tricep superset, uh, four sets, 30, 30, 15, 15. So this is something I got from uh, Joe Bennett, hypertrophy coach. What I want you to do, set up your BFR thing around your shoulder. Any bicep tricep movements you like, uh, I usually get an incline bench. I'll do reverse incline dumbbell curls, uh, superset with some kind of like overhead extension, maybe a tape press. But you're going to do 30 for biceps, immediately 30 for triceps, back and forth until you've completed all sets with zero rest. Again, pretty brutal. Should be a fun day. Uh, delts is more straightforward. Uh, I do have one pressing movement in there for delts. Uh, and there's uh, I threw in 28s. So if you guys would like to try 28s, what these are, uh, you're going to do a set of seven full range of motion reps, seven half range of motion reps from the top, seven half range of motion reps from the bottom. That's exactly like 21s for barbell curls, except we're doing it for overhead press. Here's where the 28s part comes in. As soon as you finish that last set of partial sevens, you're then going to do full reps again, seven more, but you're going to go as slow as possible, both on the eccentric and concentric. This is brutal. If you, you will probably need to rest in between, if only because your shoulders burn so much. Uh, so rest minimal time you need. Get those 28 reps in. Make it happen. Uh, again, it should be a lot of fun. And then shotgun to the dick. One more thing that I uh, that I took from Joe Bennett. So uh, I have a link in there so that you can, can figure out how to do that if you're so inclined. And then lastly, we have a schedule. So I just show you how I would lay this out over the course of a month. Again, you know, this is really your program. It's up to you what you want to do with it. This is how I suggest you run it. Uh, it's five days a week, and I think it should go really well this way. It's not the only way, but um, 
is kind of what I recommend. The other option that you might want to go with if you think you have super duper recovery, and I honest, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know that I could handle this myself, but what you could try is base A1, base B1, arms off, base A2, uh, base B2, delts off. So essentially you're doing three on one off uh, with two base days and one pump day for each four day rotation. That would be extremely brutal, but I do think it's it's possible uh, maybe for a few of you, especially if you're younger guys. So that's really all there is to the sample program. Uh, I can get a lot more nuanced with this if you guys would like. One thing that I do, I incorporate a lot of fatigue percentages based on RPEs and my own bodybuilding training that I think is a really cool idea. Um, I have some other, you know, exercises that Taylor and I have come up with, some brutal uh, drop set finisher type things. And I'm happy to share all this stuff with you, but it, it would be helpful if you guys just leave feedback was this helpful? That's all. That's all I really need. If you have criticisms, constructive stuff, that's that's even better. Um, but it really does help me to get some feedback because uh, unlike on Instagram, you don't really have the same uh, simplicity of statistics on YouTube. And I have a really hard time deciphering all that. So I'm not the best at figuring out what people like to see and what they don't. So all that feedback is very much appreciated. I hope you guys like this. Uh, please do support my sponsors. They've been super, super helpful to me. So I, I, I hope you enjoyed them as well. And I will see you next time. But until then, think strong and train hard.